is actually a different time, adds layers to it. Mm. But one of the fascinating things about it is, as well as other films of yours, how much uh, it, is, it feels uh, literary. Uh, and, I, and by this I don't mean to diminish how cinematic it is. Mm. I think it's, it has uh, the sense of the density of a literary work, and it comes partially perhaps from uh, the use of the voiceover, but it's actually not such a voiceover, it's just the juxtaposition of the two times. But I, I, I feel that this and the Inception feel almost uh, Borges-like in, in many ways. Well, I'm a huge Borges fan, and I think Inception very, very much drawn, I think, from or inspired by uh, things I've read of his. Uh, I think Memento is a strange cousin to Funus and the Warriors, and yes. <laughs> uh, for those who don't know the story, it's about a man who remembers everything, everything. can't forget anything. Uh, so yeah, it's a bit of an inversion of that. And, uh, what I was after was the sort of precision of the Warriors story. I, I think his writing naturally lends itself to a, to a cinematic interpretation, because it is all about efficiency and precision, yes. just, just the bare bones of an idea. It's quite a mathematician of the language. Right. Very much, yes, and, and structural uh, ideas are so important to him, and, and I think they, they work incredibly well in, in cinema. And I think one sense, I suppose, in which I was trying for, for a literary approach was at the time I did Memento, at the time of the following, actually, I, I felt very much that films seemed to be strangely linear mm -hmm. compared with books, compared with plays, even compared with uh, all of the media. They seemed incredibly linear. Um, and I think Memento was very of its time in a sense. I think it came along at a time when things were becoming less like that. Um, home video or DVD was just beginning uh, with its random access and so forth. And I think um, I grew up in an era where you couldn't watch films in the home uh, other than on television. And on television you can't stop them, you can't pause them, you can't skip around. And so our relationship to stories and storytelling in cinematic terms has now become much more like books. And I think Memento, for me, was an attempt to try and create something that, uh, particularly when we first put out the DVD, it was very much an attempt to say... It was a great artifact. It was a great artifact. My brother, Jonah, put a lot of time and attention into it with the people who worked with him. Um, it, it was more like a book. It was like something you could look at, look at a section of it, skip around in it, or look at the world that, that sprung out from that, that actual initial movie. Uh, yeah, are, are you familiar with Cortaza? Who yeah. Cortaza? Oh, yeah, because the structure of the film, actually, one of the features that was fantastic in the DVD, you could decompose it and recompose it mm -hmm. to, to go linear and so forth through incredibly complicated <laughs> codes. But, but it was fantastic because you literally could consult mm -hmm. the movie and reorganize it. Yeah, I, I never actually watched it that way. And I've never, I never, <laughs> I, I've never reordered it. Or we, we included it as an Easter egg on, on the original DVD release because uh, for, for the simple reason that when they they did it, they sent it to me to check whether it was okay to, to get my permission for it, and I, I just looked at the uh, the opening sequence, which had become the closing sequence, uh, and they had run it backwards, uh, it was backwards, they ran it forwards, and what I got a real kick out of is that David Julian's music. Uh, for the first time in his entire career, became happy when he went backwards. <laughs> <laughs> and I just found that, that sort of kind of thrilling. And so I said, okay, you could put it on there, but, but as, a, as a hidden extra. Because when we were making the film, uh, we were, I, I really didn't let anybody reorder the script. I said, you have to think of it. You have to think of this. You have to make this film thinking about the audience the whole time. Thinking about, okay, how is it going to appear on screen? How does that information come to the audience? One of the things that is fascinating, and we'll come back to the aspect that I think it shares with uh, noir uh, literature and noir film, and, uh, particularly L.A. Noir, which is very, very a uh, rare, beautiful read. But and one of the things that I find fascinating is both this and Inception probably are two great examples of films that are done and find a huge audience when the common wisdom, if we can call it that, because we are being recorded and I'm being very, very proper. <laughs> <laughs> the common wisdom of the distributors and exhibitors would say this is not going to find an audience. This is too complicated. And I'm sure that you almost must have been in some time travel in Inception where people were asking how complex it was or what it is that 
that happened? Oh, very much. I mean, everything in the making of the film was aimed at trying to be as extreme as we could whilst connecting with an audience. And there was an enormous amount of scepticism around the, the project at every stage. The, the good thing was with the screenplay, for example, when you showed it to people, they either loved it or they hated it. There was nothing in between. And people couldn't fake it. And so you weren't working with the right people working with new market and finance the film. Um, you knew that you were working with people who believed in it. And when we finished the film, we tried to, to get it set up with a distributor and everybody passed. And, and none of the, the uh, independent distributors of the time, of the, of the days, thought that it could connect with an audience. Um, what I had found is every time I showed it to an audience, people would get it. You know, not everybody, <laughs> but people would. And, and as we showed it, as we took it out in the festival circuit, we started at Venice and then went to Deauville and Toronto. Um, and then eventually some uh, We got very, very good responses in those festival screenings. People would, um, they would laugh at the right things, you know, the jokes, and sort of get into the rhythm of it very nicely. And that was a great relief to us, because for about a year, we really hadn't known whether the film would ever see the light of day. Mm -hmm. and, and, and finding, I mean, ultimately, it was self-distributed, correct? At the end of the day, uh, New Market uh, hired a guy called Bob Burnley, who's great, you know, independent. Who is uh, a man with a high testicular content. I don't want to get too technical. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they set up a, a distribution company that, that did very well with the film and then uh, continued after that to, to do better and better and, and became a big force in, in independent distribution in the years after. Still is, yeah. I mean, he distributed Pan's Labyrinth. And again, the right. same answer. He said, I like it. Uh, everybody was saying it's difficult. So I'm going to find an audience. It's too complex. Is it for kids? Is it same thing? And, and but I, I love the fact that as a filmmaker, you uh, there are two moments, very almost mirrors of each other, in which uh, the essential uh, declaration of principles for you is to be free. You know, one is on the beginning, which I believe it or not is easier. It's easier to be free. And it's like somebody says. I will never sell out, and you say, well, wait so, uh, until somebody's buying. You know, you have to, you have to but I love that then, after your great success, you want to do an equally challenging, equally uh, uh, beautifully rare movie like Inception. Well, Inception came about, I, I started writing it fairly soon after I finished Memento, within, within a year or two. Um, it took nine years. It took a long time yeah. to, to write and, and for me to learn how to make films on the scale that I needed it to be. But it was born of a belief that when I sat, you know, for example, in the Toronto Film Festival and watched the of an audience and heard them responding to it in a very, very mainstream way, in a very uh, clear-cut, communicative you know, relationship between the audience and the story, I felt like you could do that on a big scale. You could do a big version of that and, and people would get it, they would respond to it. And, and I've held that belief for a very long time. Inception represented my, my big, big gamble in that sense. 